Yes. Yes, 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 on, bro. yes, yes, yes. Nice to Aye. see you here, man. You too, man. How you been? I'm good, I'm good. Obviously, obviously I'm a South boy and I'm in yeah. East London. I need oh, you to protect me, so I just, want to, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to talk about you growing up. We're here. Yeah, even being here is emotional. You say you're you feeling emotional already, nah, are we? mad, you know where? <laughs> this is my house here. So this one here, yeah? Yeah, number one, Kennard Road. Up there was Denison Point. It was like an infamous block yeah. in this whole area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what, yeah, was, yeah. what was it like growing up here? Obviously, growing up in the end, so it's, it's the same everywhere, do you know yeah. what I mean? What was like the kind of realities, harsh realities that you, you kind of like had to deal with from a, from a young age? I'll go from bad to good, yeah? One of the worst <laughs> things that happened was a boy, there was some beef up in here on the bridge, a boy that got stabbed right here. Right, like, right, it, right. And it was bad, yeah. It was right in front of my house. And then obviously police and that were out here. Everyone ran up there. So how, at that time, how old was you then? I was about 12. So about from 12, 12 like, you know life is yeah. not pretty sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Lo yeah. Loads of things happen in this area, loads of things. Obviously a lot of good. Yeah, yeah for A lot sure. of good. The park up there, we, everyone thought they were Ronaldinho. <laughs> and, and David Beckham in that park up there, we'll go up there in a minute. Mm. But um, yeah, man, this, I feel like this area built me as a person. We used to chill here. I don't know if it's still sturdy. This is someone's house now. <laughs> I apologize, but yeah. <laughs> we used to all chill here. This was all black. This was my next door neighbors. I used to fight here. What, <laughs> we you used to, used to scrap here. So this, to, was, this is the, the first ring. We used to put on the boxing gloves and we used to like we used to say, oh, only body shots, only body shots. Obviously, some people used to get hit in their face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's like basically, you would say your first few yeah, man. ramifications man. of your talent was right out there. That's that's mad. Because my mum wouldn't let me box. Oh, so she wouldn't let me box, but I persuaded her to get me some, at least get me boxing gloves. gloves yeah. <laughs> and then um, she saw all the crime that was going on. There was so many fights that happened right outside my house. But yeah, this area, man, it was my, it was my building block. When you see now how much the area's changed, it's, it's, you got Westfield, you got, you got that ride over there. Because I know growing up here, bro, I'm from South, I told you, innit? Coming yeah. here, it's a, it was a no-go. <laughs> Do you get me? It was a no-go. Especially so this little it, bit. Yeah, how's it been, like, to see that change over the years? It's, for me, it's been, it's been good and bad. Remember, when, when Westwood first opened, yeah, there was, I think, like, seven stabbings in the first week. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. mad, so they had to, like, it's like they got all the, the hoodlums out. <laughs> a couple <laughs> of people went in jail, unfortunately. Some people died as well. Westfields was, like, a, in my opinion, an experiment. They got a lot of the people out before Westfields came because the rent went from a normal rate and what just to boomed. a madness. Okay. It was like it ended up being like three grand a month. My mum couldn't afford that back then. Wow, wow, wow. So then obviously things happen. But you think they did that purposely to kind of push the of people course. and the culture the out? The whole end, the whole area, like no one in this block, like, I don't think even anyone even lives there anymore. There's a sense of loss in that sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah. no one from no one from the area lives there anymore. Like nobody. I want to talk about your mum for a second. Yeah, yeah. Just how important she was. Do you feel like without her, you'd be in the position you are today? Like, how, how important is she? You know, you know what is about my mum, yeah? My mum, she allowed me to grow up on this block. OK. Like, I can't explain it, but you know, like, some of the p other parents... It's a cage down here. Yeah, they were very strict. Even now, I can look over this wall. <laughs> yeah, I can't still. Hey, don't embarrass me. <laughs> don't embarrass me. I can't still. <laughs> No, 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 this is the steps. This, this is the steps. <laughs> step. Back in the day, these are the steps. These are the steps. These are the baby steps. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> but yeah, talking about my mum, a lot of parents, from what I saw, was overly controlling their kids. Yeah, you want to keep your kids out of trouble, but you're not letting them experience real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mum used to, I was so comfortable, I used to come home and tell my mum, not snitch, but I used to tell my mum, <laughs> I used to tell my mum things that were happening. Yeah. We could talk about it. Do you know what I'm saying? A couple of girls are moving mad. I used to talk to my mum about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so she was just she just was in the know about how you was growing she up. She was in the know about everything. Even uh, some of the boys from the from the ends or whatever used to come and chat to my mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. mom was that kind of woman. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I wanted to box, and again, as I said, communication with my mom. She That's... wouldn't allow me to box because it's dangerous. Dangerous in her yeah, eyes. Yeah. But I had to show her the rules of it. I said, Mom, look, I won't name the names again, but this person got stabbed yesterday. Oh, Anthony, what happened? What, what was all that commotion that happened yesterday? Oh, this person got stabbed. I wanted to know how to fight. So when I did get approached with a knife, there was a couple of times, doop. Guy was gone. The guys went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put up like a, not a reputation, but, oh yeah, this way that like, he can bang. He can hold his own. Yeah, yeah so yeah. then people used to, yeah, watch this one, watch this one. But I was never into the, the whole gang beefing. A couple of times I went later, someone almost got moved to, 
but I knew people in Leighton, so. Yeah. So I was, when you hear about that boy that just knew everyone, that was me. Obviously, you played loads of sports. You, you was at QPR as a kid. Yes. Obviously, your boy. Um, I wasn't at QPR. I had Charles. Yeah, at QPR. had Charles at QPR. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. I thought he was more of a baller. Sorry. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. I was top. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I was top goal scorer for Tom Bridgewater. <laughs> Dunno. A Bishop Stortford. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how I got my title. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Then cool. I got injured. I said that you got but injured. I could have been a baller. <laughs> <laughs> everyone could have been, been a baller. Everyone could have been a baller. <laughs> uh, so yeah, obviously you played ball. I know you. Um, you was also playing rugby and that. So I want to know, where does it start when you say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to pursue this boxing thing? I always had an interest in boxing, but I thought I could never box. I used to watch my Tyson fights here that happened when I was born, 1991. Yeah, yeah. And I used to be like, how was this guy? I used to watch the documentary and then watch the fight, and I'd be like, how did this guy go and fight in front of the world? Yeah, how? Yeah. Like, I used to get nervous watching a fight that's already happened, but then now I'm having my own fights, there's no nerves. I'm not going to lie, bro. Yeah. If I'm fighting someone, they're going to punch my face, I'll just, I'll quit, bro. I'll, you get me? I'm not on it. Do you know what I'm saying? But I think, bro, obviously you're saying you're not scared and you, and you go for it and you're such an entertaining fighter. Yeah. Does that come from growing up in these harsh environments? 100%. What's a punch in the face? Do you know what 100%. I mean? Now, you know, it's, it's not the whole punch in the face thing. It's, it's your reality. Yeah, I was yeah. naturally good at boxing. When I first went to a boxing club at 14 years old, I went to Leighton Youth. And my mum just said to the, um, the guy that was running it, Fimba, she said, I don't want my son fighting nobody. I don't want him okay, taking yeah, punches yeah. in his head. She goes, I don't mind him doing the training. And then, um, obviously, he didn't listen. <laughs> and then I sparred a boy out. So I was 14 years old. I sparred a 17-year-old. So this was before you was taking it serious? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is when I was just doing a, because obviously I'm doing a pad. Fitness and that, yeah. And yeah. The, the coaches are saying, this, this guy's got something. Like, he's hitting hard, he's fast. I just picked up all these techniques and stuff quick. And then when I got to 18, 19, after all the doors were closed, I had a, a few injuries and I was sitting at home depressed. And I was just looking, I was just like, what is this? I was like, nah, I'm, the, the, the road man, the area kicks in, like where yeah, you grew up yeah, kicks yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm just gonna call them man, see what they're on. I need to make some money. So again, I got involved in the wrong things. I started chilling with the wrong people at one point. And then, um, yeah, started praying. Because <laughs> I found myself in certain situations where I was putting everyone in, I mean, my family, yeah, yeah, yeah. in danger. So I went out, like, literally just outside of London, because I was in problems. I found myself in some problems. I'm cool with the guys now, because yeah, yeah. obviously we spoke, they're all proud of me, they messaged me saying, yo, like, you've done your thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, like, it shows you how life decisions and choices can determine your outcome. For if sure. I didn't make them choices when I did, <laughs> I don't know different today, outcome. Yeah. There's certain things that really get your heart racing <laughs> when you're yeah, growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you're put in certain situations where you're surrounded by 30 boys and you're, there's about four of you. And all you're hearing is chick, 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 chick. Yeah, you're yeah, hearing yeah, knives yeah, getting pulled yeah, out. Yeah. Or you're getting chased down by a group of boys and you're like, if they catch one of us, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So when I'm getting paid to go out and have a fight um, in front of the world and um, win belts and build legacy, to me, that's nothing but exciting. Um, I don't care who I'm fighting. When I fought Kovalev, I, I come out in the ring dancing. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I was yeah, yeah. skanking yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm here, B. Yeah, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm actually here. I'm on the main stage in boxing. And when I grew up, when I was growing up, this was, this was a... Fantasy. Fantasy. Like, who? What? On TV. Even to be on TV is a fantasy. See what I'm saying? And now I'm here, so why would I not enjoy it? Obviously, a guy that's, like, very important in your life is Tunde, your trainer. Yes, yes, yes. How instrumental has he been in your career so far? I met Tunde when I was an adult. So I met Tunde when I was 21. Um, so two years into the training, the boxing. I had a lot of experiences with Tunde. Again, we went out to... To Las Vegas. Yes. Went out to Floyd Mayweather's gym. And again, what was, that, what was that like as a, as a young fighter it, seeing uh, one of the goats? We got to see the experience firsthand. Like everyone else got kicked out of the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody gotta get out. Chill, <laughs> yeah, come yeah, here, yeah, get yeah, up. Yeah. They used yeah. to <laughs> grab you and say, get out of the gym. <laughs> Flair's coming. But again, we was lucky enough to stay, and that's because the connections that Tunde made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, that experience, when we just see Floyd train, Errol Spence, yeah. these guys are working. And that kind of inspired, this is, the, of this course. is what it takes, yeah. And then when I come back to England, the work ethic was different, so I said, aight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen, yeah, I've seen yeah. how these men work. Yeah. So I was in the gym and no one was out working me. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, come on, we said. Oh, I right, love, man. Good luck, bro. Love I'm really watching it, man. I've always been watching your stuff, yeah, man. Trust on, me. Um, but yeah, good luck, man. Yeah, man. I'm gonna do it, man. Yeah. Bring back the wings, man. Bro. Keep doing your thing, man. Warm, man. All proud of you, man. Come all on, the on. boys always talk about you, man. Yeah. Love, yeah. man. Good to see you. Bye-bye. See you later, John. Bye-bye. <laughs> Talk to me about that that time, man. Obviously, you went through a very personal tragedy um, during lockdown and COVID with your, with your dad passing. Yet you also suffered that loss to Arthur. All of those things going on around you, how did you keep strong, maintain, and then ultimately bounce back? Again, 2020 years, like, it was like a, a surreal year. It wasn't just my dad. I, I, won't, I wouldn't ever mention it just being my dad, because it was, it was, there was four family members wow. during the COVID um, yeah, yeah. situation. And then again, a few months later, my auntie as well. So I had five family members within the space of what, eight months. Wow. So again, that, that, that year was mad for me. In the boxing world, obviously that's always going to be on my record. Um, they gave a split decision win to Lyndon Arthur. Again, I rectified it by knocking him out in four rounds, but that stained my record because I still don't feel like I lost the first fight, but I didn't win it either when I watched it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I wasn't myself in there. Do you get me? Understandably, yeah. um, I went through a lot that year. I shouldn't have been in the ring. Us being in human flesh and having emotion and things like that, it will break a lot of people. There's yeah, people sure. that wouldn't be able to go out in the, and perform in front of the world. So 28th of Jan, Wembley Arena, what you got to say to the people? Because I'm going to be there supporting. You, get you me? have to be there. <laughs> yeah. I will say to the people, if you can't be there in the flesh, definitely watch on TV because it's going to be a historic moment. I've known from the beginning that I was going to make it somewhere. So it's that thing, that feeling of knowing. Anthony, thank you, man. Come on, G. Thanks for having me. Um, no. I'm going to head back to South where I'm safe. Get me. <laughs> <laughs> See me, I don't go South. I'm really, I don't go South. I'm shook. <laughs>